Hello and how's it going everybody? It is Skullzy here with the latest gaming news, rumors, and speculation. Today I have a Bethesda news roundup video for you all where I basically break down recent but interesting Bethesda news. There isn't anything like long enough to dedicate an entire video to, however that doesn't mean that none of this is interesting because I have a few very interesting things to break down including what my thoughts are and expectations on basically exactly what we will see in terms of the summer Starfield Gameplay Showcase. Normally I refer to this as the E3 Starfield Showcase, but we all know E3 is cancelled this year, uh, even in digital form. However, E3 will live on in spirit. People are using the E3 Spirit Ashes to just basically get the same vibe and dynamic for the summer. I'm sure we will see showcases from Bethesda, Xbox, PlayStation, and Ubisoft, all, all the different developers and, and publishers like we usually do, whether or not it's under the E3 banner, and that'll probably take place in June. We are likely just a couple months away from seeing a big Starfield gameplay showcase. And by the way, it's pretty windy outside. Mayroon's Dagon is invading for some reason, so if you hear the wind or anything, that's, that's not my fault. I had nothing to do with any of that. That's something else. But either way, let's not waste any more time. Time. Let's begin by breaking down basically what my expectations are for Starfield uh, during the summer showcase this year in 2022. First of all, it begins with uh, recently Bethesda confirming that QuakeCon will take place, but it will be all digital like most people expected. QuakeCon will again be a digital only event between August 18th and August 20th this year, and this announcement was made back on April 13th from the official QuakeCon account over on Twitter, so it's it's basically legit, and at the same time, it shouldn't surprise anybody because with everything going on these last couple of years have basically been like the period of all digital events. Everything is all digital or it's cancelled, and I haven't personally been to a QuakeCon yet. I've been to E3 once uh, back in 2019 before everything entered the all digital age, uh, but I haven't been to a QuakeCon yet. It seems like they are basically committed to having QuakeCon be in person next year in, in 2020. 23 though, so hopefully I can finally go to my, my first QuakeCon, but QuakeCon will still go down this year, there's still going to be a bunch of charity focused stuff, a lot of awesome live stream and community events, and other announcements like QuakeCon usually is, and people are wondering if we'll see anything Starfield related uh, at QuakeCon, which I'll get into in a second, I think potentially yes, but first I want to segue over to what my thoughts are on what we should expect to see from Bethesda Game Studios during the Summer Showcase this summer, because that's when summer is. Summer showcases are usually during the summer. It's so awkward to not just say E3, I really just want to keep calling it E3. So I am. During the E3 2022 Summer Showcase, even though it's not E3, I expect some very specific things to be showcased from Bethesda. Obviously, we should expect to see some Starfield gameplay. I mean, that's we always see the major gameplay reveal of a of a Bethesda Game Studios game, generally the E3, right before the game re releases. Sometimes we see it uh, earlier than that, but with Starfield, it's almost confirmed that we should see it uh, this summer, probably around June when E3 usually takes place. And with that in mind, we really don't have that much information given to us about Starfield yet, even though it seems like we might. Bethesda Game Studios have gone like over what they usually do in terms of marketing in the game. We've, we've seen a lot of consolation log updates, little bits of like concept art releases here and there, uh, so we've kind of seen more than we usually have seen in the pre-E3 marketing season for Bethesda Game Studios game. However, with that in mind, Bethesda has a lot of potential things they could show us during this gameplay. Are, are they going to show us combat? Are they going to show us interacting with NPCs? Are they going to focus on a new game engine? Are they going to show us space exploration? There's so many different avenues Bethesda could go here that it seems like this, unless this gameplay showcase is literally 45 minutes to an hour long, they might have to focus it down to only showing bits and pieces of some of this or focusing on one or two specific things. But don't worry, Skullzy has your back and my unlimited access to skooma speculation, so I have a pretty good idea, in my opinion, as to what we will see from Bethesda. First off, even though it's all digital, Todd Howard will still walk out onto some sort of all digital stage by himself in a Bethesda bunker somewhere wearing that legendary leather jacket. He will introduce the Starfield gameplay showcase. Todd Howard has previously mentioned that Starfield will have two step out moments uh, compared to the one we usually get 
get in BGS games, and what we mean by step out moments is like when uh, you step out of the vault for the first time in a Fallout game and you see the world uh, beyond you and all the different places you can go. Starfield will have two of these moments, and I'm going to cover, in my opinion, what these moments will be in this Starfield gameplay showcase this summer. I expect this to take place generally around like June 9th to June 14th uh, when E3 takes place, because like I said, regardless of whether or not it's going to be called E3 in 2022, it's still basically going to be the same vibe and stuff. Uh, so I expect all this to go down around then. It'll probably be live-streamed, it'll be a live-streamed all-digital event because that that seems like a lot more likely than just a pre-recorded thing. So yeah, live on stage, Todd Howard will begin the Starfield gameplay showcase. I believe the Starfield gameplay showcase will begin with character creation. Since we already have it confirmed that there is a character backstory selection process and the character creation is a lot more in-depth than it usually has been in previous Bethesda Game Studios games, or at least the more recent ones, I expect they want to showcase this a bit because they've already talked about it a little bit even before uh, the E3 2022 season. Like I said, I'm going to keep calling it E3. And also at the same time, showing the character creation is a great way to show and introduce the community to Creation Engine 2. So that's, it's like killing multiple birds with one stone or, or maybe helping them all uh, with one stone so we don't get cancelled by bird people. Uh, yes, helping multiple birds with with one stone uh, but regardless after character creation we will be dropped to a building of some kind in this way we can be shown the user interface the inventory menu how the character moves around the world and how it looks how it seems to feel uh, to whoever is playing starfield because we won't know until we play it for ourselves and we'll see a little bit as to this new uh, npc dialogue mechanic that's supposed to take place within starfield as well todd howard had said that they overdid how the dialogue and persuasion and all that that works in Starfield, and it's kind of baked into natural conversation, so I believe they're going to showcase this a little bit at the beginning of the game as well, and also show us how the NPCs look, because like I said, they, they kind of want to showcase the Creation Engine 2 almost as much as they want to showcase Starfield. And then, after all this, inside of the building and introducing us to just the basic uh, visuals of Creation Engine 2 and the user interface and how interactions with the game world and NPCs work, we're going to have our first step out moment, because our character Character, the character in the Starfield gameplay showcase will accept a quest, and then they'll step out of that building, and this will be the first step out moment where we see the planet beyond us and all the different directions and places we can go like we're accustomed to in the Bethesda Game Studios game. We'll see a little bit of combat, maybe we'll even see a little bit of vehicle stuff if the player actually drives a vehicle on the planet's surface. If not, it'll be on foot, we'll get to see combat, we'll get to see some of the enemies, maybe some aliens, but all this will be leading up until what I believe to be the second step out moment and the ending of the Starfield gameplay showcase. I expect it to be about 30 minutes or so and I kind of think Todd Howard and friends are going to tease us and kind of like make us angry. We're going to have angry hype at the end of the showcase because they're going to confirm something in my opinion that has been one of the biggest debate factors in the Starfield community. Whether or not there is manual spaceflight. I believe the summer 2022 Starfield gameplay showcase will end after this big combat sequence and all of these things and turning into quest and getting to know the new game engine in the world and how it looks uh, with the second step out moment. After doing the quest and turning it in, the player character in the showcase will then get access or be awarded a ship or something like that, and we will actually see the character get onto the ship like we saw in the E3 2021 Starfield a trailer, and the character will get onto the ship in the gameplay showcase and fly up manually into space. Manually into space, through the planet's atmosphere, into the void, into the cosmos above, and begin to fly around a solar system. We will see manual space flight this summer in June of 2022 in the Starfield gameplay showcase. And then after like 30 seconds of this, Todd Howard is going to end it. He's going to end the showcase. We'll barely get to see any actual space flight, but he will confirm it because in my opinion even though that would kind of like 
suck because I would want to see so much more of the space flight, it would be the best way to hook the community, get their attention, and leave them with wanting more. And that brings me to my next thing, QuakeCon. We might see a space flight trailer at QuakeCon, and beyond that, we will see more Constellation Log update videos leading up until another trailer probably in September or October before the game releases. A launch trailer, if you will. And that will be basically the rest of the Starfield marketing campaign leading up until the game's release this November. That's my opinion on what I'll expect we'll see. Obviously, that's just based on what we know as of April 15th, 2022. This could change as we get more information and stuff. Uh, who knows? Maybe Bethesda will confirm Spaceflight a month from now. I doubt that, but this is just my opinion. Uh, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below, though, ex for sure, because I'm kind of curious what you all think about this. But I think this would be the best thing to do, to confirm so much about the game, show so much, but leave us with wanting more. Because after all, they can't show us everything, right? They, they still want some surprises, even if it's fundamental gameplay things, uh, to be discovered during the initial gameplay for ourselves. A couple last things I want to talk about in this video real quick is, according to the Reddit community, uh, for some reason, every time something like this happens, this always, always makes the news, but nonetheless, I gotta cover it in today's video just for that reason. Starfield is now listed over on Amazon again. Uh, this has happened before, uh, but has usually been taken down but people believe this is the real one now because we are just a handful of months away like less than a, like about a half a year away actually uh, from the game's release date so whether or not this this Amazon listing for Starfield is legit the point is that if it is this seems like the framework is being set up for there to be open Starfield pre-orders uh, here very soon now of course Starfield has been uh, on Steam and stuff like that for a while but if they are going to do a major showcase this summer, like we all know they basically are, then they'll probably open up the pre-orders at some point around, around then too. Uh, but yeah, I just felt like this was interesting to share because it's basically trending right now in the Starfield community. You gotta remember though, this happens, th this has happened for the Elder Scrolls 6. I'll just say that. This has happened for the Elder Scrolls 6, so let's not take this with too much confirmable skooma. This is, this is questionable skooma. Don't drink this unless you're desperate. Sell it to someone you don't like. And then last, director and actor Stephen Ford put up a mysterious tweet saying if if you're excited for Starfield, like this tweet, so I can follow you for reasons I can't say yet, and I like the tweet, and he didn't follow me, which makes me sad. Not really, I'm just joking, but the point is I actually think that he could be a certain character in the game. Uh, I don't know really where he's going with this, he could just... Some people think he's just excited for Starfield and he's a Starfield fan, but he literally says for reasons I can't say yet. He wouldn't say that if he was just a Starfield fan. He obviously has some connection to the game, and there's some theories based around this. I actually uh, commented on this tweet saying, uh, is this you? Because if you look at how Stephen Ford looks in this picture, and then look, look at this official Starfield art here, this promotional art, which also happens to be this character right here as well, Stephen Ford looks like this guy. So some people believe that Stephen Ford is this character and voices and plays a character in Starfield. Others believe he voices Vasco. I mean, he could maybe do both. Bethesda usually has to have voice actors voice multiple characters sometimes, but nonetheless, I definitely think Stephen Ford is a voice actor <laughs> in Starfield and that this tweet might be the very early signs of a larger capacity Starfield marketing campaign to go down. I mean, it's kind of strange that he's doing this now. It is a couple months before E3, though, so I suppose it lines up to some degree. But either way, that's everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. Like I said, just a few interesting things to talk about. Nothing big enough that I wanted to dedicate one entire video to any of these one specific topics, although I am pretty confident with what I said that we should expect from the Starfield Summer 2022 Showcase. As always, let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it directly helps the algorithm push the content and grow the channel. Leave a comment down below about what your favorite story was that I covered today. Be sure to subscribe, and as always, if you want to go above and beyond to support the channel and the community, you can support the channel over on Coffee, Patreon, or here on YouTube as an exclusive channel member. Links for all this and more are down in the description below. You can get a permanent video shout out by supporting the channel in this way. But as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in next time when we're just a couple months away from finally seeing Starfield. This almost doesn't seem real.
it, it just works. <laughs>